Okay, let's get going on this. It's Tuesday. Pastor Joe here talking about uh, the day that we're living in. You know, this last few Sundays, four Sundays, we've been talking about the end times. You think people would be excited about the day that we're living in. Scripture is very clear about what it would be like. Jesus was very clear. The apostles, Daniel, the Old Testament was very clear on what it would be like before Jesus returned, you know, and, and restored his covenant with Israel and took his seat on the place of, of the throne, uh, the seat of David in Jerusalem, and how he would be worshiped by the whole world, a thousand years of peace. But that is just so overlooked today. In fact, the churches that used to be evangelical, that used to preach this message, just kind of taking a back seat to the liberalism and the coldness and the deadness of the culture. It is, it is similar to Jesus' first advent, the first coming. At Christmas, we talk about the advent season. It means his coming. Jesus came to us uh, a couple thousand years ago, all right? And you would have thought that in his season and his time of coming, that people would have been excited as well. Those who were familiar with prophecies, and there were a lot of prophecies about Jesus. All right, and his first coming, and even more prophecies about the second coming of Christ. But there wasn't any excitement. Remember when the Magi came to Herod's palace and uh, showed up there at the gate, and they they asked the uh, Herod where this king of the Jews was, where where was this king who'd be born? Herod talks to the religious crowd of the day because they should know the answer. They tell him uh, the prophecy indicates that he'll be born in Bethlehem. Magi headed straight towards Bethlehem. On their way, again, they saw the sign, and then they saw it resting over the place. I don't believe the sign was a constellation. I don't believe the sign was a meteor. I don't believe it was a comet. I believe it was a sign. I believe the Magi were wise men from the East who were probably, most likely, Hebrews. Why would they else be looking for the king? You say, "How? what were Hebrews doing in Persian Babylon? Read your Bible. Remember the history. They'd been carried off, you know, into Israel, the choice men of Israel had been taken into Persia and the Babylonians overthrew Israel and Judah and, and, and Jerusalem. And they took the choice men, guys like Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. These were, these were men of God. And they had prominent positions in, in the nation of Babylon, which later became a Medo-Persian empire. These guys, these Hebrew children, I believe, were very familiar with what the scripture had to say. And then they said, we have been following his sign. Well, the sign that they would be familiar with, because they are familiar with, you know, the books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, those books, which also describe the exodus of the children of Israel, they understood the children of Israel led by a sign. It was a fire by night and a cloud by day. They're following this fiery sign in the sky. And even as they leave Jerusalem to head for Bethlehem, the fiery sign appears and it says it rests over a house. Now, if it's a fiery sign that rested over something, it had to be like the sign that rested over the Holy of Holies in the, in the encampment of the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness. So anyway, that's another story. I want you to tune in. We talk about that in December. When we talk about the first advent, we're focused on the second advent. I'm saying this. So many things are happening in the world around us and people are ignoring it. The, the, all the things that scripture talks about, Jesus made it very clear. He said, even like the first time in the last days, because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. Unfortunately, too many pastors have gone to sleep. Too many Christians have gone to sleep. And very few people seem to be really tuned in to what the Bible's teaching and preaching today. But it's all part of where we are living. But if you love Jesus and you're excited about his return, then you ought to get your head up out of the spiritual sandbox and look around you because God is doing some things in the world today. Even the nation of Israel itself is a fulfillment of prophecy. All right, remember when, when the wise men went to meet Herod in Jerusalem, Israel was not a nation. It had been overcome by the Romans. The temple was completely destroyed in 70 AD, just like Jesus said it would be in Matthew 24. The world governments that are prophesied in Ezekiel and Daniel and Isaiah concerning the, the second advent, the second coming of Jesus, those things are in place. Now the nation of Israel is in place, the first time in history, 1948 when it's established. So, Wake up. God is moving. I want to encourage you to, to get your Bible out and start studying the Word of God again. And then let it ignite a new passion in your heart, a new love for Jesus today. If you find yourself in some kind of a, of a, of a dead state, spiritually speaking, ask God to send a revival. These are awesome times to live in. Let's be a people who are excited about His coming. Jesus said, blessed are those servants that He finds looking and ready and serving. We need to be serving the Lord at this time. So, Find your spot. Get down the front lines. Let's live for Christ today. Amen. I want to remind you, this weekend in Magnolia, uh, we have a children's clothing distribution that will take place. Uh, you come, uh, bring friends, bring family. All the information is on our website. It's in the bulletins, in the announcements we've been talking about during the week. 
we'll share a little bit more in our Wednesday Word about that as well. And then a couple of weeks from now, we'll be doing it at our spring campus. Great opportunity for people, especially with limited income, to come and get clothes for basically nothing. They can leave a love offering or not. But it's a, these are all premium quality clothes. They've only been worn very short time. Children, they don't stay in their clothes very long anyway. They, they grow out of them so rapidly. But again, God bless you. Tune in to what God's doing. If you didn't listen to Sunday's sermon, you got to go back and listen to it. And this Sunday, when we're talking about prophecies concerning the nation of Israel, you can't deny these facts. All right. So be here and join us. God bless you. We're looking forward to seeing you this Sunday. Come be in there in person.